Hey everyone, it's Hexical here with my first product review of hopefully many more. Today we're going to be reviewing a keyboard from a small company based in Canada. It's going to be the Venatos Northern Glow TKL Optical Keyboard. Is it worth buying? Let's find out right now. When you open this package up, you will find it packed nice and securely away in foam padding. It was definitely safe during shipping and you can tell they took care in making sure that it would be safe in transportation. In the box, you will find the keyboard on top, covered in another foam substance. And below it is the wrist pad, also packed nicely away in a foam padding. The wrist pad looks really nice and feels really premium quality. You can tell they put some time into this. After all of that, you can get to the manual. It's a pretty basic manual, but it'll help you out. It also comes with a nice holographic sticker with their company logo and just their social media tag and a bag which has some white keycaps in it which I actually think I will put on soon and it also comes with a keycap puller which I find really nice. The Venatos is overall built very well. The keyboard itself has little to no flex as you can see in the current video. Despite appearing to be mainly made of plastic, it's built very sturdily and the wrist pad is also pretty comfortable. I will say the plastic feel of the keyboard can be a bit off-putting, especially if you're moving from a keyboard that is using some sort of metal plating. But you get used to it pretty quickly, and it doesn't compromise the overall quality of the keyboard in my eyes. My one main complaint would be that the cable is not detachable, as I am a fan of coiled and custom cables. The cable that is provided is nice enough though, and it feels of good quality. The keycaps also feel nice. Nothing out of this world, but definitely nothing that was cheaped out on. They are your typical run-of-the-mill ABS injected keycaps. I am not a huge fan of the font on the default keycaps, but that's a personal preference and the white ones that they also provided have a cleaner look too. The Venatos comes equipped with orange optical switches, which have a nice audible click and give a good amount of feedback to the user on a click. They feel really nice and crisp to type on, and I find them enjoyable as someone coming from mainly blue switches. The Natos also offers you the option of swapping the switches, as the board is hot swappable. You can even buy a different set of switches, Silent Red Opticals, on their website. Now here's a typing test of the orange optical switches. The lighting of the keyboard is clearly the star of the show here. It is displaying a stunning show of RGB all across the keyboard, with individually lit keycaps, a border with RGB surrounding the keyboard, and even nice strips along the wrist rest. They offer two options of RGB control, one where you can control it directly from the keyboard using hotkeys, or you can download their software and use it to customize the lighting. The software to control the RGB is alright, but definitely needs to be worked on but they do make it very clear it is still in beta. I did notice that the outside strip of the keyboard tends to be pretty dim, but nothing too horrible. I also had some troubles getting colors to sync between just using onboard keyboard controls between the keyboard borders and the wrist rest ones. The lighting is otherwise very vibrant and the colors appear accurate and nicely saturated. There is also currently a bug with the software where the FN and delete keys are stuck on red when you use custom lighting but I contacted them about this and they said that they are already working on a fix for the problem, which is a plus for them. Overall, I think this keyboard is definitely worth the buy. It has amazing RGB, is built very well, feels nice to type on, and is really customizable. The software is a little lackluster, but they do make it clear that it is still in beta and that they are working on it. Now, I do have a few other gripes, like the cord not being detachable, the outside LED bar on the keyboard appearing to be a bit dimmer than the inside, and how the onboard controls can sometimes be a little wonky. But a lot of that seems to be software sided, so we can give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that they are going to fix those soon. Anyways, thanks for sticking around for this review. I hope this helped you in your decision of buying this keyboard or not. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed, and also make sure to join my Discord or follow my TikTok, which is down in the description below. Thank you. Bye.